One of the questions I answer the most on our weekly live stream Q and A's is should I go and buy an RTX 2070 Super or save like 150 pounds and buy an RX 5700 XT instead? Well, in this video, I'm gonna talk you through these two Gigabyte WinForce cards, one of each, and talk you through their performance, through their differences, and hopefully leave you with a good understanding of where you should be heading for your next GPU purchase. So let's start with a bit that everyone loves, the benchmarks. I'm testing four games here, all of which were at 1440p. I'm testing Battlefield 5, which is on ultra settings in DirectX 12 mode, but with DirectX ray tracing disabled. I'm also testing Call of Duty Modern Warfare, again with DirectX ray tracing disabled, but basically on max settings otherwise. There's also PUBG, which is on ultra settings, and there's also Fortnite, which was on epic settings. So with that out of the way, let's take a look at the numbers. So starting off with Battlefield 5, we have a pretty close tie here with the 2070 Super edging out ahead at 3 FPS average better, with the 1% lows only being 2 FPS better, which is still pretty close and honestly is not all that hard to tell when you're actually playing. When it comes to Call of Duty Modern Warfare, the results are actually in the favour of the 5700 XT with a reasonable lead, just shy of 10 FPS. FPS leads and the 1% lows are also about 10 FPS faster, which is a definite good sign for the AMD card. When it comes to technically older engine games like PUBG, this is in much more in the favour of the 2070 Super here with a 15 FPS lead over the 5700X and a 10 FPS lead in the 1% lows. The same can be said about Fortnite, where you're seeing a, again, 10 FPS leads and a slightly closer gap in the 1% lows, all still very playable, but the win definitely goes to the 2070 Super. Now for the sake of clarity, the test bench I was using for those numbers was a Ryzen 9 3900X at stock frequencies on a Gigabyte X570 master board, as well as 16 gigabytes of 3600 megahertz RAM. In terms of the driver versions I was using, I'll throw them up on screen. The AMD one is actually an optional sort of beta adrenaline driver and the Nvidia one was the latest one that was available at the time of testing and filming. Now speaking of drivers, that's actually something I want to, to make a point on here. There have been a number of reports that AMD's drivers have been a little on the buggy side to say the least and I cannot claim to be one of the few that have been affected by that. I actually deliberately gave them the, the worst shot possible here in that when I installed the newest driver for this video and for these tests, I actually didn't remove using DDE or even just plain uninstalling the NVIDIA drivers nor old copies of AMD drivers. So I actually just overwrote, overwrote the existing copy of the AMD driver that was installed. And so in theory, that's kind of a, a worst case scenario, but like I said, I basically didn't have any issues. Now I am planning on doing a load more testing and doing a full video on that in the near future. So if you're interested in that, do make sure you are subscribed. But otherwise in the, the interest of transparency, I did have one issue with the AMD card and that was uh, just for a brief moment while I wasn't looking, the system restarted on its own. Now because I wasn't looking at the system, I can't verify or tell you exactly why it restarted. Um, I wasn't looking away for the system long Long enough for it to be a blue screen so it's likely a either just cold flat out crashed and needed to reboot or honestly it's certainly possible windows just decided to restart itself for a windows update because it does that sometimes otherwise i did actually have an issue with the nvidia card as well um, which was testing with Battlefield 5. I'd previously tested the game at 1080p and when launching the game, it was just straight up a black screen. I was then able to reset my settings and set it to 1440p for these tests, but I tried manually setting it back to 1080p and it would just flat out black screen. Now that was only an issue on the Nvidia card that as I tested it. Uh, while that is likely an issue with Battlefield 5 itself, it's something to note as a general issue with you know, using these cards and so there you go. So what about power and temperatures? Well I recorded the maximum they hit including the maximum clock speed as well so the 2070 maxed out at 1875 megahertz whereas the 5700 XT maxed out at 2019. Do bear in mind those numbers cannot be compared as they are two completely different cards so keep that in mind but 
interesting to know. When it comes to the temperatures, the uh, 2070 hit 61 degrees Celsius, whereas the 5700 XT hit 63. That's kind of surprising, pretty close. And in terms of noise, while that's a subjective test, I couldn't really tell a difference between the two. In terms of power draw, it was actually kind of surprising. The 2070 actually drew more power, 219 watts, versus the 202 that the 5700 XT draw. So for over $100 more, should you be looking at buying a 2070 Super or saving your money and going with a 5700 XT? Well, when you look at the benchmark results, at least from the games I was able to test, they're actually pretty similar. They trade blows with some titles, especially the RecTex 12 one seeming to be a little bit better in favor of AMD, and the slightly older engine designed uh, titles like Fortnite and PUBG being a little bit in favor of the 2070 Super. If you take a look at other benchmark results, you'll see that generally speaking, the 2070 Super does have an advantage and you can see a little bit of extra performance depending on which game you look at. Now with that said, for me personally, I would hands down go and buy the 5700 XT basically any day. Even if you did have driver problems with it, the reported solution for those driver problems is just using DDU to remove them and then reinstalling them and there you go, problem gone. And so for that extra, what, $100, $110, I would much rather save that money and perhaps put that towards a better SSD or even better CPU to get more performance or just save it and not need to spend it and still get pretty similar performance, generally speaking, across the board. Of course, NVIDIA are rumored to be launching an RTX 3000 series fairly shortly, and so you might consider waiting. Although, as with basically all tech launches, you generally should just buy whatever you want right now, because the next thing that's around the corner is generally always a lot further around the corner than you think it is. The current rumors suggest that they'll be launching or announcing them at Computex in June, which is a good three or four months away and even then that assumes that they would actually launch the cards and make them available anytime soon after that and there's also no guarantees that they will actually launch a 27 or 3070 immediately and again stock availability in rush pricing and so there are a lot of factors that mean generally speaking I'd recommend buying now and then upgrading later if you really need to. And of course those are my thoughts and I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. Which card would you pick? Let me know in the poll up above as well actually. Uh, would you go with the 2070 Super or the 5700 XT? Also if you are planning on going on Team AMD or Team Red, do the potential driver issues worry you or is that not a, a ma major factor for you? Do let me know in those comments down below. Now, if you want to see more videos like this one every Monday, Wednesday and Friday including the look at AMD's drivers, do hit that subscribe button and the bell notification icon. If you want to check out either of the cards I've featured here, in, uh, specifically these Gigabyte OneForce ones, I'm including links in the description down below. Those will be Amazon affiliate links that will take you to your local Amazon store where you can see pricing when and where you watch this because it can and does vary. Otherwise, if you want to support the channel and keep me making these videos uh, in more ways than just watching them regularly and making sure you're subscribed, then feel free to check out the rest of the links in the description down below. There's stuff like Amazon and Overclock GK affiliate links that don't cost you anything to use but massively help me out when you do use them, or there's stuff like merch or hoodies or t-shirts like this one, I'm really happy with how incredibly soft this thing is, or you can also check out Patreon if you want to get cool rewards like ad-free videos and support me directly, and a load of other stuff down there too. Otherwise, that is pretty much it. Feel free to check out some more videos over there, and we will see you all in the next video.